But Flint, of course, is uh, one of the most prominent constitutional uh, monarchists in this country. And uh, Professor Flint is standing by in our studio in Sydney and watching this. Uh, Professor Flint, just one question for you, if I may. When the Queen meets the Governor-General, who curtsies to whom? Well, normally the Governor-General would curtsy. There's no obligation on the Governor-General to do that. But if she wished to curtsy, she would. And uh, that, that, is, that would be the normal protocol. Uh, but uh, the Queen does not take over from the Governor-General. A myth has gone around that when the Queen arrives, the Governor-General disappears. It's not the case. The Governor-General still has all of the powers. For example, the power to commission and remove Prime Minister is an unlikely event during the Queen's visit, but those powers are all still vested in the Governor-General. Well, as we await the arrival, the door will open, I'm sure, in just a few moments from now. What is the significance, so far as you see it, of this 16th visit from the Queen? I think she stands there as a symbol of stability. She is at the head of the oldest institution in our constitutional system, which dates from 1788. It's stability, and she personally brings the sense of service and dedication. Uh, she has been Queen of Australia for more than half the life of our Federation, and there would be many people alive. In fact, most people alive today would not have known another monarch. So there we have stability. The knowledge that this is an institution which is over and beyond politics, and people like that because our Westminster system gives a very legitimate place for the politicians. But this is one institution which is completely outside of that and above it, and the testimony of that will be on Friday when she meets both the Prime Minister and then the leader of the opposition, and uh, they speak to her with courtesy and consideration, knowing that she represents this institution which is at the heart of the constitutional system, which shows us that many parts of the constitution, many parts of our system work without politics, the armed forces, the courts and so on. Well, we're watching uh, the Governor-General Quentin Bryce and Michael Bryce, her husband, uh, putting themselves into the position to uh, welcome the Queen, the Prime Minister and Tim Matheson also uh, gathering there as we await for the door to pop and I think that might be just about to take place now as the door opens. Speculation as always as to what the Queen might be wearing and uh, we won't need to speculate for much longer because uh, there is the door. There's always a touch of military uh, pomp associated with this. Of course, she will travel with her uh, equerry, uh, who always holds uh, rank. The Navy is the senior service uh, in the British Armed Forces and, uh, and normally has uh, that role. Uh, so um, plainly they're going to keep us in suspense for a little while longer as we wait for the Queen to emerge into what is an absolutely sparkling Canberra uh, spring evening. It's not quite summer yet. There are about 200 school children who've been waiting on the tarmac now for, uh, for well over an hour in their quite warm conditions uh, for this moment. They were selected to come down there. This is not a public, uh, public event in the sense that this is a secure area. It is an Air Force base. Everyone who was here to meet the Queen has had to be cleared through security, have had to have their, uh, their, their tickets, and, uh, and that's enabled them to be here. And here comes Her Majesty. Just a glimpse there of what I would call, and I'm no expert in these things, I think it is powder blue. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip arriving here in Australia for their 16th visit. And across the noise of, uh, of an airport tarmac, you can hear the scattering of applause uh, almost lost in this giant space uh, as the Queen comes down. to be greeted first, we expect, from the Governor-General. And the big bangs you'll hear are the 21-gun salute going off behind me. Uh, probably shatters the nerves of those who haven't heard it before, but I think the Queen has heard it very many times in her life as the, uh, as the salute goes off. The Queen, they're a bit obscured there by the, uh, the man in the beret, but uh, meeting in red the Governor-General Quentin Bryce, and from there to the Prime Minister and Tim Matheson.
Queen has met so many heads of state, of course, in her life. Her first British Prime Minister when she came to the throne was Sir Winston Churchill, which shows uh, just how many people, not just British Prime Ministers, Australian Prime Ministers, those of the uh, 54 nations of the Commonwealth. One of them is suspended at the moment, I have to say. That's Fiji. So only 53 nations in the Commonwealth at the, at the moment. But uh, she has met lots of people, seen a lot of this sort of pomp. And when the 21-gun salute ends, we'd be expecting to uh, hear the striking up of the royal anthem, God Save the Queen, which, again, she will have heard so many times in the course of her life. The woman there in the black and white stripes is uh, Katie Gallagher, who is also a, a head of government, if you like. She is the chief minister of the Australian Capital Territory, and protocol uh, puts her as well in the receiving line, seeing we are arriving in the Australian Capital Territory. And so the Queen now makes her way to a viewing stand where she will uh, take the salute and also uh, uh, get a good view there of the uh, band of the Royal Military College Duntroon. She'll be visiting Duntroon, it's their 100th anniversary, and they now play the Royal Anthem. is of course a British anthem. It is the royal anthem when the Queen is in Australia. Uh, but now she will hear the Australian anthem, Advance Australia Fair. She is off the podium now. She's going to uh, uh, view and inspect, we are told, according to the uh, protocol, the uh, the Federation Guard, as it has been called, Ceremonial Guard of the Australian Armed Forces, all the services represented. I have to say, I'm not 100% sure it's powder blue. There seems to be just a tiny touch of green in there, but I, I claim no expertise. Amanda, you might have more... Uh, knowledge of this what would you call that color well from here it looks like it's got a, a tinge of vibrancy to it so i don't know i think you might be right with a little bit of green in that i don't know if i'd say powder blue Hugh. you might have to, <laughs> to brush up on your color but yeah. uh <laughs> I, I, I am male I, I i recognize only about six colors i'm afraid so my apologies <laughs> to the fashionistas out there wearing pearls though I noticed wearing mm. pearls that's quite right now in the course of this visit she she bypasses Sydney uh, she does not go to Adelaide or to Hobart or to Darwin uh, she does however travel to Brisbane uh, just for a day trip and uh, probably the emotional highlight in many ways of her trip here might be that visit uh, to Brisbane which she will meet their survivors of the terrible floods from earlier this year she will meet some of the heroes of the rescue effort uh, that took place um, after those dreadful, deadly floods, she will then come back to Canberra that day and, and have a bit of a break before going down to Melbourne, uh, where there will be, again, one of the other highlights, the opportunity to walk through Federation Square in central Melbourne there. Uh, and that will be one of the best opportunities for people who want to see the Queen on this visit, uh, if they wanted to make the journey there to see her as she walks through Federation 